Good morning everybody and welcome to my podcast, Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch, uh, the South Island of New Zealand. And this is my little space where I talk about my knitting, my yarn and my patterns um, and my passion for the craft. So welcome um, and I hope that you have your knitting with you and some time my podcast normally run for about an hour. I have a lot to cover, so it's probably going to be quite a chatty little podcast. Um, so to all existing viewers that have returned, thank you very much. And to everybody new. So my, my subscriber numbers um, have really increased in the last month or so. So to all of you new subscribers and new viewers, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Unwind and Knit With Me. It's all very straightforward. It's the same um, on all my platforms. And I'm actually coming to you from my little shop that I have here. And you can visit that shop online. Also, um, just unwindandknit.com. So I leave all the links below to everything that I talk about, um, any patterns, yarns, any references you will find in my show notes. And um, I should have started with this. I wanted to say this is episode 38 and it's Wednesday the 29th of March. So episode 38 is pretty cool. We're really getting up there. Um, and I'm super thrilled. So thank you everybody that has helped me get to episode 38 and also to everybody that has helped me get over 2,000 subscribers. Um, I think that's all the admin things. I did want to also say thank you to everybody. I had a birthday on the weekend um, and went away for the weekend with my husband, which was lovely. Um, so thank you to everybody that wished me happy birthday. It was really good. Um, and I also wanted to say a special hello. Um, I have had a couple of visits to my little shop. Um, I had Verla from North Dakota in USA. Um, so Verla and her husband popped in to my little shop and said hello. So um, I hope you had a lovely trip, the rest of your trip in New Zealand and have made it home safely um, back to North Dakota in USA. And also, also um, I had a lovely visit from Noelle and her husband, and she's from Ontario, Ontario in Canada. Um, and she also has a podcast, which I will talk about at the end. I'm going to give you um, some references to a couple of podcasts that I've been watching. Um, but her podcast is, it's Noelle and Callie from Canada, and it's Knits and Pieces. Um, and she came to visit me and she also did a wee little video and um, we had a chat and her husband filmed it and I know that she's going to put that on her next podcast so I look forward to that <laughs> um, but she bought me this beautiful gift um, it's a sock yarn kit from Leo and Roxy it's a um, it's a merino nylon blend but it's a mulled sock kit and the blue and the white, so you can contrast the heel and then do your striped cuff. And this is absolutely beautiful. And it come with the free pattern. Um, I think it's a free pattern, but it come with this pattern to knit the, to knit the socks. So I've wanted to wind this um, and put them in my sock knitting bag to make a start on them, but I wanted to show you first. So I was really thrilled to get that gift um, and I felt really special. The other gift I got, um, last weekend, I probably mentioned in my previous podcast, we headed down to Central um, in the South Island where my husband ran um, a 100 mile running event, which he does a couple of times a year, um, which is crazy, I know, but I love that area and I actually have quite a good time because I just sit around and knit for the weekend. But I met up with another friend who's also a knitter um, and her husband was also running and she'd been over to Australia and she bought me this <laughs> really awesome gift. Um, she bought it to, for me to put in our motorhome and it's a cushion cover and I haven't put the cushion in it yet, but I wanted to show it to you. So it says Lisa's spot. Don't mess with me. I have pointy sticks and then it's got needles. It's got two little pockets here where I can put little bits and bobs 
and I was absolutely thrilled. Um, so obviously she had it personalized and um, it was in Australia and I have got, um, yeah, I've got the email there their, of their website. So I'll leave that in their show notes in case there was anyone that wanted to do something like that for a special friend. Um, I, I think it's really, really special. I love it. Um, and I will put a cushion in it and I will probably keep it in the motorhome because um, I could do with a little cushion in the motorhome. So there are two gifts that I received um, that just made me really happy. So that's all I'll go on to about my birthday. Um, we did have, um, and it's really important I touch on this, so I've got a giveaway, which I'm going to announce the winner of that um, in this podcast today. But I announced it on Instagram, and as soon as you use that word giveaway, um, your my Facebook was attacked with what they call bots. And I know this has happened to a lot of podcasts, podcasters lately. And as soon as they see that word, it's, they just target it. So I just need you to know if I ever do a giveaway and you receive a message um, asking you to go into a link, um, asking for details or payment details, I think it says you've won the prize and then you have to give them your personal information um, and, and a payment. Well, it's all a scam. So what I just need you to know is any giveaways I do, I will, I will announce the winner here on this platform, um, which I will do with you today. And then I won't notify the winner. It's up to you to notify me through my website. There's an email address. And the only information I will ask for you then is your postal detail so I can send you the prize. Um, I'll never ask you for credit card details or anything like that. So, um, yeah, just be aware of that. If I do a giveaway, which I'm going to do another one, um, but I will do it through my YouTube um, comments, not through Instagram. But please just delete, report, block, do whatever you can to those um, messages. It's really quite upsetting to think that this is just such a beautiful space for knitting and, um, and that kind of scamming goes on. But like I said, rest assured, you'll, I'll never send you texts or um, any messages like that. So anyway, what are we doing? Okay, so I think that's all the admin stuff. I do have to say there might be a few stop and starts. I'm expecting a trade man to come here today to fix my garage door. Um, so yeah, let's see how far we get without any interruptions. The first thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm wearing. I am still on my, um, it is my second coffee. I have to say, I don't normally talk about the weather, but it's so cold here today. I think we've got a, t a high of about 9 or 10 degrees, and it's grey, and it's drizzly, and just not a very nice day. We're in um, autumn here now, and I've got to say, though, my street looks really pretty because all the leaves um, are turning orange. Anyway, that's my weather report for Christchurch. There is quite a bit of snow um, in South Island on the hills. On the mountains. We never get snow here in Christchurch though. We're at sea level. And okay, I'm hearing things now. I thought I heard my doorbell but it wasn't my doorbell. Anyway, I'm wearing my Sprite jersey by Andrea Mowry. So I had finished this I think in my last podcast but I don't think I'd blocked it. That's the pattern there. Um... I loved this pattern. I don't know what else to say about it, really. I love this bit of lace work in the yoke. It's top down in the rounds yoke. And then there's a row of bobbles. Love. And I love the corrugated rib. Um, the only modification I think I made was I've done the cuff um, quite a bit longer. And the band around the bottom, I did that same um, measurement. And it was because I really did want this, this flash of colour to pop a bit which it does. I, I really love it. So I used um, Yarn Adelic Yarn, which is a sports weight, and the body of my jerseys in Ordinary Joe, and I did my colour work in Wondrous Place. I have still got quite a lot of Wondrous Place left, um, so I'm going to do a beanie. 
I'll talk about beanies a bit later on. But um, yeah, what can I say? I've talked about it a lot in my previous podcasts, um, but I love it. It's wintry day here, so it's perfect day to wear it. I will. I don't know if you can see. I'll try. Yep. So there's the band there. Um, it's a good length. I did talk about the length as well. Um, I've made a real conscious effort to add a bit more length um, to my jerseys. They I always seem to get them a bit short. Um, I do always stop my body just under the yoke and do my sleeves first before I continue the rest of the body and that helps. Um, but in my previous podcast, it will be episode 37, I talked about my theory on the length of jerseys. So you can go there and have a look at that one. Um, but this is the first time I've worn this. Um, I've had it hang in and I've wanted to wear it a couple of days. And I thought, no, um, it's debut outing will be uh, this episode. So it's the first time I've worn it. It's blocked out beautifully. I love the way the size is. I did the size, I think I did the size four. Um, I had a problem getting gauge, um, so I did go up quite a, a few ne needle sizes than Andrea had recommended. So it may have been just, I've used different yarns, so it's really important to swatch. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy with it. So that's Sprite by Andrea Maori. Um, and like I said, I won't go on about it too much because I probably talked about it in my last two or three episodes um, as I'd been working on it, but that's what I'm wearing. Um, I will talk about the winner. So I did a competition for this lovely leather bucket bag. I have included four skeins of the Devonia in colour Wild Damson. So there's four of those. I also included a set of my knitting cords, which I've talked about. These are just a game changer. You, These are a must have for your knitting kit. And I've also added um, one of my knitting balms, one of my hand creams. So that prize is going to, um, I did it, I have, subscribed um, to an app that's automatically generates a winner um, and if I can I'll insert the photo I did a screenshot um, just to show it's all legit <laughs> so it was a random selection and the first name that come up and the only name because I only did it once is Mary Ann Penner from Canada so I'll insert that um, on the screen, but Mary Ann Penner from Canada, congratulations. You find this beautiful leather um, bucket bag um, full of wool and cords and hand cream. So absolutely thrilled um, to be able to give that away. Yeah, congratulations. I know that I'd love to win a prize like that. I think it's pretty special. Okay, I do have one FO. So, And this is such a great pattern. I've already planned the next one I'm going to cast on. But it's the Robin Beanie by Sarah Nordland. That's it there. Now, what I love about this beanie and what attracted me to it, because there's like thousands of different beanie patterns. I'm sure you've all knitted. You could probably knit them with your eyes closed. Like, they're all very basic. Um, what I liked about this one is that you actually start at the top and just work down. So, in my, in episode 37, I talked about, um, let me just get my notes. So, it's a pinhole cast on, and I got that from Pearl Together Tutorial on YouTube. I will leave the notes below, but this um, pinhole cast on, it's, it's really quite, quite cool. Um, so, you actually cast it on, and then... It's like a drawstring and you pull it in and tighten it. Um, but it's a really nice way to start a beanie. And then you do this series of increases. You can see there. On the crown. 
and then once you get to this point where you finish increases it's just two by two rib for as long as you want to go so it becomes really good sort of car knitting or tv knitting or you know cafe knitting um and the two by two rib is really squishy it's super super squishy i haven't decided whether i'm going to put a pom-pom on this i haven't decided whether i'm going to put it aside for one of the boys or one of the girls um the yarn I used is Touch Yarn, so that's a New Zealand company. It's 100% merino, 50 gram is 100 meters, and I used exactly two balls. I had the tiniest bit. I, I just knitted until I finished the second ball, um, which I think is perfect. Sarah Nordland does say to do about another four inches, but I think what she recommends is so you can turn this brim over twice which would make it really really warm um but our temperatures don't get that cold here that i think we need that extra warmth so i'm happy with the length i did it and the other thing i i haven't blocked it yet so i will show you um on my next podcast when it's all blocked but i think i might put a little leather tag on it that just sort you know the ones that sort of say handmade with love or handmade by mum. <laughs> um, I'm going to put a wee little leather tag on it and maybe a pom-pom with one of the discs that you can remove it. I have left my tail in there. Um, I haven't sewn that tail in. So I've left it there thinking that I will possibly put a pom-pom on it. Um, but I, I love this pattern. I highly recommend it. It's really easy. Um, and I just love the whole top down um, idea. Also, the cast off I used, it's really interesting. I only saw it on YouTube a few days ago, but it's a cast on where you use your needle and wool and you go in three stitches and then drop the last stitch off. Go in three, drop the last, go in three, drop the last. I don't know what it's called. It just appeared on my reels in um, in Instagram. But I thought I'll try it because I don't like doing a lot of sewn, up, sewn bind offs. Um, but this was really, really easy. And it's super, super stretchy. You can see how stretchy that is. Like I'd use that on socks, that cast off. And I'm not going to try it on because then my hair will go everywhere. <laughs> um, so that's the Robin Beanie by Sarah Nordlin. Highly recommend it. Um, already planning on casting on another one. It's going to be some of my gift knitting um, that I'm going to put aside uh, some socks and beanies um, for the end of the year. So that's my only FO. Now, my whips. There's one whip that I want to talk about quickly before I get into my real current whips. I've had a couple of people ask me what happened to my Marie Wallen jersey. So if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that last year I ordered a Marie Wallen. I ordered it as a kit from the Woolly Thistle. And it's been so long that I can't even remember what the pattern was called. Aislin, Aislin, I think it's called. Um, so I ordered the kit in, um, and it's Marie Wallen's own brand of yarn, which is called British Breeds. And I got quite a way in the body. I, I actually got as far in the body as I could before you have to stop and start the sleeves. And it's just stunning. It's really, really beautiful. Love the smell of that yarn. It smells really, ch 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 um, it smells really sheepy. Um, have to show you my floats. My floats look really good. Everything about this is really um, lovely. I have, and this is how far I've got on the sleeves. I literally just cast on the sleeves two at a time. And then it's been in the naughty corner since last winter. But what I've decided is that colour work like this for me is something that I do enjoy doing more in the winter when I'm home, sitting in front of the fire, cold, wet days, um, is when I, I, I seem to really get into a flow of doing this sort of colour work. 
but it doesn't excite me in the summer. In the summer, I love doing more of this type of work. So I have pulled it out off my shelf. And as the season changes and it does get cold and we have those days that I'm sitting in front of the fire, I am going to um, try to make some more progress on this because it's too lovely. Um, the investment of my time and money is just too great to let it just sit there. Um, so that's my update on my, on my Marie Wallen and I will work on those sleeves. I've cast them on two at a time for the cuff is what I'm working on. But as soon as I get into that color work, I'll just do one at a time. And I haven't decided whether I'm gonna do it magic loop or whether I have got the small circumference needles, whether I'll try those. But I'll update you as I go. Um, so there's Marie Wallen out of the naughty corner. Okay. So my next work in progress gonna get the picture is by petite knit and it's called the agnifi cardigan now this is a one color brioche this um is a very new sort of technique for me for me um i haven't done much brioche and i've not had much luck with brioche but a friend of mine's also doing the same pattern and she's very good in brioche so she sort of said, do it with me. And if I get stuck, you know, there's someone I can call on to help me. Um, well, I've only needed her help once. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Now, let me get it. Now the yarn I'm using, I bought from my local yarn store and it is actually very local to me here in Christchurch. So the sheep come from here in Canterbury. The yarn is spun here in Canterbury and dyed. And it's called the Grumpy Merino. Um, you can buy this from the yarn store in Rangiora. I will leave the links below. There's only three colors. It's a really high micron count um, and it's an extremely soft DK Merino. Love it and highly recommend it. And I have to pause here because my... Okay, let's see if I can resume. Um, sorry about the interruption. My garage door broke, which meant I couldn't get my car in and out. And now I've got tradespeople coming and going. But anyway, back to my Agnetti cardigan um, by Petite Nets. I think I showed you the pattern. Yeah, I did show you the pattern. Um, so this is my first real brioche project. And I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm really in the flow of this one color brioche, which makes me think that my next project will be a two color brioche. The yarn I mentioned, Grumpy Merino, absolutely love it. It's a real rounded, squishy, soft, super soft um, merino. And I will leave the link for Rangiora Wool Shop if you are interested in this um, particular merino. So here's my project. So you start with the back and then you pick up from this seam here, from this seam here, you pick up to do the left front and the right front, which is what I have done. You can see these lines running through there. Those lines, it's where I've had my lifeline. A cotton thread and I'm pretty confident that um, that those lines will block out. I'm not skilled enough to fix my mistakes in brioche and that's why I'm using a lot of lifelines. So I'm now working on the whole body. Um, you can't really see it. I'm working on the whole body now. This pink thread here hanging down, that's my lifeline. Um, I started the body and was really excited, but I now have to do buttonholes and I really need to sit down and look at the pattern and get my head around that because the band is um, double knit. It's such a beautiful structured band. Um, I think it's called double knit. So you knit each knit stitch and you um, slip each purl stitch. And it just creates this beautiful structured double band. Um, but I really need to 
work out my buttonholes. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, absolutely love it. It is so soft and squishy. Um, really, really excited about this project. Really want to get it off my needles to wear this winter. Um, so hopefully next, well, definitely on my next podcast, I should have worked out how to do my buttonholes. And I'm hoping to have made some pretty good progress in the body. But, um, yeah, it's Petite Knits is a pattern where I find you have to be a little bit of an experienced knitter. Some patterns, um, it's like they hold your hand through the whole way and everything is really specific and detailed. I found with this Petite Knit pattern that I have to read it and reread it and look at tutorials. Um, and then the tutorials aren't in English. Um, so you have to read the subtitles, but quite often you can work out what to do just by watching the video, um, if, even though you can't understand it. So I would say this is probably for um, an experienced advanced knitter. I don't think I would have had the confidence to do it without having a friend who is an experienced brioche knitter. So that's where I am with that. I love the fact that I'm challenging myself to do something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone. And I'm really hoping that I can kind of master the technique of brioche. I have been recommended a Stephen West tutorial that's online and he talks about brioche and how to become confident with brioche, but also how to um, fix your mistakes, how to read your stitches and work backwards to fix your mistakes. So I think that's something that I really need to do because I just really lack that confidence. If I make a mistake, it just has to sit there and I don't touch it until I um, catch up with my friend. But I've got to say the lifelines um, give me a lot of confidence as well. So that's my Agneti cardigan. I am doing that on a size 4mm needle. Um, I have gone a couple of needle sizes to get gauge. So I do recommend doing a swatch because my first attempt um, wasn't any good and I had to rip it back because I didn't swatch and I didn't get gauge. So do a swatch. <laughs> um, that's probably all I've got to say on that. But like I said, I really hope to have made some really good progress on that by the next time I see you. My other project that I have want to show you, and this is another one where um, I'm that knitter that my theory is if in doubt, rip it out. If I'm not happy for some reason, I don't keep going because I kind of think I'm not going to love it so why waste my time this particular project I'm on take three <laughs> it's my third I've ripped it back twice um for no other the main reason I ripped it back the last time is because I had um so I'm using indie dyed wool and I had one that was from a different batch and the colour variant was too obvious for me. So I ripped it back, put that ball aside. So what I'm using now is all from the same batch, but I am still alternating my skeins. But this is um, a Mikahia Knits. Um, her name is Elizabeth. I really recommend that you jump on a Ravelry and have a look at some of her patterns. She's a local um, Christchurch lady. Um, so I do like to promote New Zealand designers. So this one is called Sky Watching. And, and it's just, I think, a really good um, basics um, for my wardrobe. But I love the lace detail around the yoke. And there's also a bit of detail down the button band. So the yarn I'm use, using is a yarn that I've got on my own label. Um, so you can get this on my website, unwinderknit.com, but this is a high twist. Have a look at that twist in that. It's a high twist merino, 100%. Um, New Zealand grown, Christchurch milled, Christchurch dyed. And this color is called Volcanic. And I love it. I have spoke about this before. I can't. Yellow is not a colour I can wear. It just makes me look quite yellow. <laughs> but I love this colour. Love, love, love it. Um, so there's like a 
there's sort of some greys and um, um, what colour would you call it? Greys and I don't know tan, but then you'll then you get these flashes of yellow. So yeah, really, um, really enjoying this colour. I'm hoping some of that lace work will show up. Not showing. Oh, yeah, it's showing up. Okay. So it's raglan, um, raglan sleeves. That lace work around the top, and I'm just working down um, to where I divide for the sleeves. Not sure if you can see. Yep. So that's the button band, and there is quite a little bit of detail on the button band. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think the yarn um, will tell a big story with just that little bit of flash of lace work. Once again, that pink thread is my lifeline. <laughs> so that's that there. I have wound off two balls and I am alternating them. So that's from the same dye lot, but you can even tell by looking at them. This one's got a little, little bit more sort of um, greys. This one's just got a bit more yellows. So I am alternating my skeins, so I won't have any pull in of colour. So take three, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at now. Um, what have I written here? I'm doing the size four. It is a cardigan that's designed to have um, not much, uh, what would you call it? No positive ease. Um, it is designed to be quite fitted. Although I don't mind if it's got a little bit of positive ease. So I'm doing size four. Um, that's probably all I've got to say. Once again, I will leave the links below. Um, Amika here knits. Um, I recommend you pop over. She's got a couple of really nice cardigans um, that I would call real um, wardrobe basics. So, whips, whips, whips. Now, I've got quite a few new patterns to show you. Um, you know, they say knitting is a hobby and then yarn collecting or yarn purchasing is a separate hobby well for me collecting patterns is also a hobby i know that in my lifetime i'll never get to knit all these patterns but i do print them off and put them in a folder and i get a lot of joy out of going through my folder and looking at all my patterns um right Marie, the right so this is the next one i wanted to talk about this is um, a pattern that I am going to cast on shortly. I showed it in my last podcast. Now it's a Hohi Loka Tally pattern and it's called La Prairie. La, La Prairie. Um, and it's a fade. And I have never done a fade before. And I've always wanted to. I'll show you this photo because it shows up a bit better. So she's actually gone from sort of the gold right down through to the pink. But there is, is quite a bit of detail in the pattern and lots and lots of bubbles. So there's a lot of things about this pattern that I really, really love. But like I said, I like to try new techniques and challenge myself. Um, and the fade for me is something that I haven't done before. Now, I did go into my stash, so I'm really quite happy about this. Now, I bought these, I think I showed them in my last podcast. I bought these a few years ago at a yarn festival, and there, were, there was a pattern that I bought them for, and it was a fade, but I never did it. I think it might have been a shawl, and I'm not a big shawl wearer, but it was quite an investment in yarn. Now, let's see if I can show you. So these um, are four colours, and the fifth colour I bought was the pink. But then I have broken into this for another project some time ago, so I wasn't going to have enough of the pink, and I actually wasn't sure that the pink was the right colour for this fade. So I really think these colours work, these four. So the darker, that, that. 
So I needed a fifth colour. So I did jump online and it's Yarn Therapy. It's a Kiwi um, dyer. And this is a Merino Linen Blends. And I bought a fifth colour that's in the same colourways. You see that there? So I'm not sure where I'm going to put this one. I'm going to put it in there somewhere. But it it will be quite sort of a subtle fade. Uh, yeah, so I've taken the pink out of the equation. And um, I'm pretty well got that ready to cast on. I've got, I'll talk about them later on, but these beautiful new bags that I've got come in. They're really thick leather. They're, they're just stunning. Um, I have put them I have put one on my website just so you can go on and have a look but I'm getting these in six colors I'll talk about it the at the end I do a shop update so I'm going to talk about these bags a bit more so pop all that back in there that is my um, La Prairie by Hohi Locatelli um, that's got lots of detail and lots of bubbles but I think it will be a really, uh, I think it'll be a really stunning cardigan, and I'm excited that four out of those five balls of yarn actually come out of my stash. So I'm finally going to get to use um, some stash, um, some stash yarn, and I think that's really important. Yep, so I've got my fifth colour. Um, I will talk about my next giveaway. So I'm not going to put this on Instagram. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it for viewers of my YouTube only. So if you're watching me, you can enter. Um, I do read all the comments that people leave. I don't always re reply instantly, um, but I do reply to everyone. Um, so thank you for everyone that leaves me comments. Um, so with this, I was... At, um, the lady, Cynthia, I think her name, is from Mrs Peacock's Yarns. So she got in touch with me and asked me if she sent me one, would I do it as a giveaway? Um, and I said I would. So this is beautiful self-striping yarn. And she sells these on her Etsy shop um, as Mrs. Peacock's Yarns. I will leave the link below in my show notes. Um, and this colour is called Posy. And I, I really love it. I'd love one of these for myself. But I'm going to give this away. Um, she sent it to me in this beautiful little cotton drawstring bag. Um, so on the comments, if you just want to leave um, uh, with the word Peacock or Mrs. Peacock, I'll put you in the draw to win this. Um, and I'll draw the winner before my next podcast. So that was very kind of Cynthia to send that. Um, I have been, this is my other bucket bag. <laughs> this bag is just for sock projects. So this is Mrs. Peacock's yarn. Um, I have shown you, I've been doing the um, DRK. DRK Everyday Socks by Andrea Maori. Um, that's sock number one. It looks really funny when it's not on sock blockers. And I have cast on sock number two. So I'll show you this because it is a whip. <laughs> I've literally only done the toe. That's it. Um, what a mess. But that's it there. And of course, the contrast colour was this gold. So I have been using Mrs. Peacock's yarns. It's beautiful, soft um, sock yarn. So, yeah. I'll give that ball away, but jump onto her Etsy shop and have a wee look. So that is a good segue into um, Mr. Stephen West. Now, Stephen West this year did a year of socks and I signed up for that and every month I get a new sock pattern. And I have cast on the first one, um, which was cable trellis sock and I won't even show you because I've made no progress since um, since my last podcast I actually haven't done any sock knitting really um, since my next pod since my last podcast I think a lot of my downtime where I was just doing TV knitting I spent doing the Robin beanie 
um, but I just thought I'd share this with you. Um, I have shown you every pattern for this year. This is the March pattern and it's called Woven Checks. Actually, this photo probably shows it a bit better. It is a paid for pattern. I'll be careful what I show. But um, that is Stephen's um, Woven Check socks. You can buy these patterns individually. Um, I get, I, when I signed up, I paid for them, um, a one-off payment and it worked out quite a bit cheaper to do that than buy them individually. But I know at the end of the year, I'm gonna have a beautiful collection of um, sock patterns that I'll probably never knit half of them. But like I said, it's, it's a hobby on its own is pattern collecting. So if you're a Stephen West fan and you're a sock knitter, um have a look at him he's, he's come out with some really really nice sock patterns um okay here we go i have some new patterns that i want to share with you that um i should take them out of the plastic first shouldn't i excuse me Um, I jumped onto Ravelry and I found some patterns and some of them went just onto my favourites list and some of them I actually purchased. This one really caught my eye and it's called Reflecting um, and it's by a knitwear designer called Unwind Knitwear. I'll show you the picture there. And I'll, ta I'll tell you why I really like this pattern. Um, I've done a few colour work jerseys, um, Jen, Jenny Steinglass. Um, Jen Stigas type of colour work yokes. This pattern here, um, she has put reflecting takes inspiration from the reflection of foliage and flowers on the water. So that was really quite, um, I thought that was quite neat. But what appealed to me, what you do with this jersey is quite different. But the cast on that you use is Judy's Magic Cast On. And then... So you basically start in the middle um, and you work up. So you cast on here and you work up to the neckline. And then when you finish that yoke, you come back to your cast on and then you work down. And what you're doing is like a mirror image, um, hence the word reflecting. And, and I thought that was really quite clever and I would like to try that. I think it'll be a really nice um, way to do it yeah so from there up pick up the stitches and then from underarm down um, she has used a four ply fingering um, four ply fingering weight sock yarn um, so I think it would be um, you know most of us have sock yarns available to us I thought I wrote the gauge down but I didn't but once again, do a um, do a swatch, and I do like the um, the easy fit and the boxy sort of style of that pattern. Yep. So that's reflecting. So that's one pattern. I did look at some yarn in my stash that I could do this with, but I decided to just, just put it aside because I've got um, a couple of other whips that I need that need my attention before this. But I did want to share that pattern with you. Um, now the next pattern, I've got a feeling I've heard about this pattern talked about, so it could it could be a fairly old popular pattern but I did like it. It's called the Felix Cardigan and it's by um, Savory Knitting and it's a it's a fairly basic um, boxy style cardigan. It's Aran weight or chunky yarn or you could use a DK in a mohair and it was a DK in the mohair that actually appeared to me appealed to me. The gauge is 14 stitches so it would be a really quick knit so it's really quite um, chunky but also light and airy um, and it's a top down 
top down with eyelet increases and short rows, short row neck shaping. Yeah, so it's got, I think where the, I can't actually tell by the picture. So where the shaping for the arm is, it there are eyelets there. Um, yeah. Jump onto Rev and have a look. It did appeal to me, like I said, because I think it would be a really quick knit. Um, it's chunky. I, I do have, um, I think it's a 12 ply chunky sort of mohair in my stash that I could do this with. But I'll tell you what I was actually thinking of doing it in was um, my Apple Door DK and double stranding that with um, some of my Kid Silk mohair. And I'll talk about that in my shop update. I've actually got the, all my mohair at 10% off at the moment. Um, but I thought that would be really lovely um, double stranded. So that I'll either do it this or I'll use the chunky one from my stash. I think it might be a touch yarn that I bought a year or so ago. But that's the Felix Cardigan by savoring this in and I will leave the link below. The next cardigan, this actually showed up on my Instagram probably a few weeks ago, but maybe even a month ago. And I thought it was really quite a stunning pattern and it's called the Florence Cardigan by Gabrielle Knits. And I did jump on a rev. Gabrielle Knits, she's actually got some really beautiful patterns. But this is the Florence cardigan. And it's the detail on the sleeve that appealed to me. Um, I have said before, I, I am on a roll at the moment with cardigans. I, I need more cardigans in my wardrobe. Um, and that's why these um, patterns have come my way. So the Felix, sorry, the Florence cardigan, it's, pop, it's top down. It's a raglan construction with sophisticated lace sleeves. Um, and once again, you, it's a worsted weight or a chunky yarn. In the pattern, I've done a DK and a mohair. So once again, very similar to the, fe the um, Felix. This one's a 19 stitch gauge, um, where the Felix is about a 14. So um, there's a little bit difference in gauge. But um, I, I just think it's a really sophisticated, feminine-looking cardigan. You can see the lace work there. This one, um, the Florence, has been done a 4.5 mil needle. Yeah, and a chunky yarn. The other reason these two cardigans have appealed to me is because I personally can't wear a, an Aran weight um or a chunky weight jersey, I get too hot. And it, it's not cold enough here in New Zealand. And our, you know, you're always in the winter, you're in it heated indoors anyway. So I just wouldn't wear a chunky weight jersey. And that's why I'm loving the, the idea of these cardigans because I you can wear them buttoned up and they're warm or you can wear them undone. And I just think I would get a lot more wear out of a cardigan done in chunky um, or Aran weight yarn. Okay, so two more patterns. I think I may have mentioned them before. But what actually happened, I was playing with some of my yarn and so I've actually done I've actually matched some yarn to these patterns. So this may feel like a little bit of a shop update, a shop update, because I am going to talk about some of my yarn, but it is more about the patterns as well. Um, and I do, I do, uh, yeah, I don't want to finish here because I've got some um, podcasts that I want to talk about. But anyway, um, Amika here knits, I mentioned before, because I'm doing the sky watching, but she's got this pattern called Kanapu. Kanapu? And it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a love note or a ranunculus. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> um, 
So Kanapu is inspired by light shining through new spring leaves. I really like that. Mm -hmm. But this one here is a um, fingering weight double stranded with a mohair. And this is my mohair. It comes from South Africa and it's nurturing fiber kid silk mohair. 25 grams is 210 meters. This is the most beautiful, soft, it's a really luxurious mohair. Um, and it's available on my online store. But I want to double match that with this super twist, super twist merino. And I love this. Well, actually, there's a few color combinations that I really like. But I really like this blue, which is called Monet. And the mohair is called Monet. And I want to do this jersey. I want to do that. Um, I, because in, on my radar was Love Note. I was going to do a Love Note. But when I saw this, I thought, no, I want to do that one instead. I like the, um, the open neckline. So that's Canapu by... Um, Amika here knits. So New Zealand designer. The next one I want to do for my daughter. My daughter's 22. And she does like some of my knitwear. She does wear some of it. Um, and I, I think I've showed you this before. But it's called the Lola Pullover by U Knits. Claudia Q. And... I can, see, I can see my daughter wearing that. It's very cropped and, yeah. And I love this combination. So this is called Aged Leather in the Kid Silk Mohair. But I'm going to double strand that with my Exmoor sock. Now, I love this. It does have 10% nylon in it. But it is um, Exmoor Blue Face, Corridale, Zorbles and nylon, but it has a really nice halo to it. You can see that it's not, it doesn't feel like an, a sort of traditional sock yarn, but it is a sock yarn, but it's, it's got a really nice handle and I'm going to double strand it with aged leather. So it's all over pattern. It's all over um, pattern work. I haven't actually delved in too far to see what the pattern is. But that's another new pattern that I wanted to talk to you about, the Lola Pullover. Okay, there was a couple of new podcasts that I have been watching. Um, some I've been watching for a little while, but I thought um, I'll share them with you. I don't, I don't often... Um, do a part of my podcast dedicated to other podcasters but I thought I should if there's something um that sort of appeals to me I should share it with you um so the first one was I mentioned at the beginning was Knits and Pieces and that's um Noelle and Kelly from Canada and Noelle is an incredible knitter she just produces some really beautiful work and they talk about their local yarn store and what they're knitting. Um, and they do also do a live a live podcast. But they're, they're really nice to watch and quite informative. Um, the other two is they're actually, it's a Kiwi, a New Zealand podcast. Um, and it's Kylie and Jill. And I've got a feeling that one of them might be Australian living in New Zealand but they're called cup of tea cup of tea in a yarn um and they're quite hard case they're actually quite funny um you know some podcasters I know I know myself there's some that I I love watching all the time but there's some that I it depends what mood I'm in, whether I'm wanting something really quite funny and uplifting or whether I want something more serious so you know, they're worth having a look at um, and seeing if you like them. But that's Kylie and Jill, cup of tea and a yarn. Um, and they sometimes they do it together and sometimes um, they, they tune in from, I don't think they live in the same town. The other one is two sister-in-laws um, from the UK. 
and they're called Wool and Wishes um, and I really like their podcast as well. I will leave the links below um, but that's Wool and Wishes. I often am quite envious of podcasters that do it in pairs. I think it would be so much easier because <laughs> I, I know how hard it is um, or how much work goes into doing a podcast as one person, where I think if you had an offside, it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun to bounce things off and back and forwards. Um, so those three that I have just recommended are all podcasts, um, podcasters that do it in twos. Um, I think I'm getting towards the end now. Um, I just want to recap the giveaway is Mrs. Peacock's yarn. Um, so if you want to leave me a comment um, using the word peacock or Mrs. Peacock, um, I, I can do a random selection from all the comments um, using that word. Um, and I will do the draw on my next podcast, which will be episode 39. Um, for that winner. Please also know that I will never text you or notify you um, about winning a prize. I will only announce the prize winner here on my podcast. So um, going back to the prize, this the prize of this beautiful bag with that beautiful yarn um, was Mary Ann Penner from Canada. So Mary Ann, if you want to flick me an email, um, it's shop at unwindandknit.com. You can get that link through my website. So my website is unwindandknit.com. Um, at the bottom, there is a contact email part there. So you can contact me through there um, and I will get your address off you and get that sent to you. But um, yeah, just beware of scammers and those bots. Just delete them and block them. Um, I think that was every, I think, I think I've covered everything. Um, once again, thank you, um, everyone that sent me birthday wishes and thank you for viewing. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And, and if you like the content, please do the thumbs up, um, the like symbol, because that helps me with YouTube and algorithms and the likes um, you can follow me on instagram and facebook unwind and knit no sorry unwind and knit with me but also we have a community facebook group um, which is also unwind and knit with me it's a community one and it's growing really well it's we've got over 500 people on there now but it's a space where you can post what you're doing and i really encourage you, if you don't mind doing that, post what you're working on, your yarn, your patterns, share it with others because I know my, I know myself that I often get inspiration from other people's posts. So within that group, it is somewhere where, where you can post what you're doing and interact with other knitters, ask questions, um, and there's a big group of people there that can help out um, and give advice. They um, I do have to remind you that when you join that group, there's three questions that you have to answer. Um, how you heard of me, what your craft is, and more importantly, the bottom one is, do you agree to the terms and conditions? And really the terms and conditions are just be nice and be kind. <laughs> um, but it's important that you answer those three questions. I have a couple of moderators that, um, that moderate that page and they have said to me Lisa please tell people to answer the questions because some people join and say my my hobby is knitting and then they don't go down any further and answer the other two so um yeah jump over to there um yeah oh that's what I wanted to show you one moment there is a wee shop update um Jameson and Smith is this yarn over here. This is Shetland wool, 100% Shetland wool. Um, in my last order, they sent me this by, by mistake. Um, not for free, but <laughs> by mistake. But this is actu actually their undyed. It's 100% Shetland wool undyed. It's 50 grams, 172 meters. And there's only this one color. 
and I have reduced these. They were $19. I think I've reduced them to $14, $15. But they are on my website. So if you are wanting to do um, any colour work or anything with um, the Jamison and Smith Shetland Mall, um, there's, there's quite a bit. There's 30 or 40 balls available at the moment, but I have reduced their 50 gram balls. That is on my website under its own heading, the 50 gram. Um, this is the kids' silk mohair that I've been talking about. And they're the five colours. So there's a light blue, aged leather. The pink's gorgeous. It's called Cherry Blossom. Um, I have reduced all of these also um, by 10%, and that price is calculated at checkout. So if you're wanting to do some... Um, like this double-stranded mohair. It is beautiful with the Exmoor sock. Um, this would also be a really nice combination for that Robin beanie. So if you want to do a Robin beanie, um, the pattern is actually written for a fingering weight and a mohair held together or a DK. Um, so I did mine in a DK. Um, but this mohair would be perfect. And 200 metres, you'd probably get a... Robin Beanie out of one that took a hundred that took a hundred grams which was 200 meters you might need to but um, yeah if you're keen if you've been wanting to do some work with mohair um, I think it brings it just under the $20 22 down to around 20 but have a look at that kids silk mohair it is really a beautiful soft um, luxurious mohair and I just want to show you this quickly because this is a bit of a teaser because these are probably still a month away these bags but these are my new my new bags that I'm getting in and each one's going to come with its own little notions pouch to match and there's there's going to be six colours, but I'm not sure if all six colours are coming in the first order. But they may be a bit staggered. These bags are all handmade and hand-stitched out of this beautiful thick... You can see how thick it is. This beautiful thick leather. Um, these bags are made for a lifetime, and they, they actually get better the, as they get older. The leather softens, um, and they actually get better with age. The ones I do still have in stock at the moment is, um, I've talked about this because it's my really old faithful um, project bag. This is a really big bag that will hold all of your, it'll hold a really big project and all of your notions and everything. Um, and it does have this drawstring closure on top, which you can use, or if you don't, don't want to use, it just folds back in. On itself in the bag so I do still have some of these in stock but only in this color I sold out of the black um, but that I will be getting more in and I will be updating you as I come in I have had a lot of inquiries about the colored ones um, but yeah still probably three or four weeks away but really excited about those bags um, it, it's given um, about four ladies employment um, where they can they, they they make them at home basically handmade at home so it's it's just a really nice story behind them um and they all come they come from south africa so that's me very chatty <laughs> i don't think i've got anything more to talk about other than to say a big thank you um for supporting me and for supporting my channel so please continue to subscribe give me the thumbs up and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Um, I really think by then we're going to be into winter. We're still getting the odd nice day, but it's um, starting to feel like winter here in Christchurch. Okay, thank you everyone. Stay happy, stay safe, and hope you get lots of knitting done. Bye.